Now we move on to the second segment where we are going to know from Kirti how has her communication skills helped in professional uh, life in her career. So Kirti, so far you have talked about your student life, how you used to be, then how you improved upon your skills, how you developed and acquired your speaking skills. So now can you please tell us how has communication skills played uh, an important role in your professional goals? So there's one thing that I would like to mention that uh, your speaking skills are not a skill set that you require only if you want to become a public speaker. In a sense, yes. if you want to give a TED talk or if you want to be on that platform, motivational yes. speaker, if you want to become a motivational speaker or something. Uh, I think speaking skills are a life skill which helps you professionally also. Mm. So um, I have many experiences where I've used my speaking skills for my professional goals. Be it, yes. uh, be it as a researcher, be it as a teacher, be it as, uh, as a research scholar. So I think uh, it helps. It, it is a life skill which helps you at different stages. Um, so I think today we see that culture, the corporate culture, where you are supposed to make presentations every now and then. Maybe the team is smaller. Maybe you do not have to speak in front of 100, 200 people. But this is a skill which will help you in uh, in conveying things. That doesn't even matter whether you have a small audience or a large audience. But it's a skill which will help you professionally in various. So if, uh, if I have to talk about how it has helped me as a researcher, then I would like to talk about the kind of system we have in higher education. So during the masters, we have term papers for all the subjects yeah. in JNU particularly. So mm -hmm. I think other universities also have similar pattern where you're supposed to submit up a dissertation or something. Yeah. Uh, but okay. in JNU, we have a very continuous evaluation and uh, along with the written paper, we have term papers where we have research projects. We have one topic. We work on that. We submit a written part, and then we make a subsequently we make a presentation out of it. Uh, then during MPhil, we we select a topic. Then uh, after every three months, we have an assessment meeting. In the assessment meeting, you will have a board that consists of ten to fifteen teachers from our center, mm -hmm. and they will be evaluating our progress as to how far we have progressed in our work, uh, where are we, if we are facing any challenges or something, then they are ready to help. Um, they are, so it's like nudging you in the right direction, nudging you to write a good dissertation. Mm -hmm. During PhD, uh, we have more one-to-one -one interaction with our supervisor. We are, uh, my teacher encourages us to have a PhD group where we have almost 10 to 12 PhD students in our group. And every week, someone or the other is presenting. We, sh uh, we share with each other whatever we have done in the previous month or two months, our turn comes later. So we are always presenting and we are always exchanging, reviewing each other's presentations and learning from each other, sharing our experiences, our challenges, and constantly uh, becoming a better researcher. Yeah. Along with it, we are supposed to make presentations in conferences and seminars mm -hmm. so it's a very different experience because you have a large number of researchers coming from different universities um, so we are also supposed to participate in competitions like young job first competition okay so i think conferences and seminars are a very important part of a researcher along with how good your publications are what also matters is how you're able to uh, communicate to a larger audience. So yeah. presentations are a very good means to communicate your research. You have interacted with other researchers, other uh, your friends who are also in the same field. So how do you see yourself and others? So how are others different from you if you want to share? Uh, every researcher is unique and research as I told you is a combination of two things your publication skills and your presentation skills. So, um, so present written skills are equally important, but your presentation skills can make a huge impact. Okay. So I think, uh, as I said, all researchers are unique and we all have different, uh, we all have different skill sets mm -hmm. that some people write well, they have very good publications and some people present well. 
I, I I describe myself as someone who is a balance. I think I'm an average person who writes well, and I think, but my strong point is my presentation skill. Okay. So, uh, for an instance, if I could just give an example, during my MPhil years, I was I used to be very excited to participate in every competition. Like, if there is a seminar, there's a presentation, I wanted to participate because that was a very different experience for me. And I think, uh, as researchers. you should learn this skill you should learn how to communicate your research otherwise your research is nothing but a pile of papers lying in the corner in library so <laughs> until and unless you communicate your work is useless yeah uh, so i went on to kurukshetra university we had an international conference there i very excitedly participated in a young geographers competition so people there were in their phd they were presenting their phd work and mm-hmm. i presented my masters work over there. so you can just compare that what was the level i was a beginner in research and they were the uh, they were they had, they had gone really far with their research studies so you can just really, you can just uh, make out that there was a difference of 4 to 5 years both academically and also in terms of age but i was okay because that was my first uh, conference and i said just let's up now i've participated i have to give my best mm-hmm. so uh, my work was based on secondary data and their work was based on primary data where you have stories where you have experiences to share one by one they went and i felt that you know they, they these people are so good their research is so good and i don't stand anywhere but my Supervisor was there, and she said, "You know, whatever you have done, just present it. Winning is not important. Winning the competition is not important. Mm-hmm. But having that first-hand experience of presenting yes. is important." So I decided, "Okay, let's face it." Uh, I remember it was a huge conference hall, and there were two hundred to two fifty research scholars sitting there, and most of them looked like they they were PhD students. In masters and MPhil, you barely feel that. Should be a part of conferences, but uh, in PhD people make sure because it's a part of your assessment, um, and people also acquire that interest in research that they make sure to participate. So I was there on the one side, and there were two hundred people sitting in front of me, two hundred to three hundred. There were teachers, there were top university professors from various universities. There was also my own supervisor, and that made me even more ter- terrified. so i just just cleansed my fist and i said that no matter what i am not going to shame myself <laughs> they are phd students it doesn't matter i am an mphil student and i'm presenting my masters work but i'll make sure that i make a mark that they should understand that i'm young but i have the potential if i reach yeah. that stage i'll do well mm-hmm. so i started presenting and uh, uh, my my heart was pounding i was like i was literally scared but uh, i don't know maybe i have become so comfortable on stage it didn't reflect i didn't look that i was nervous yeah so my presentation went really really well i had presented secondary data but uh, uh, i presented really well and the questions that they asked me i was able to convincingly answer that so Uh, there were teachers after the conference who came up to me who said that you know you have got very good presentation skills just try to hone your research skills in the sense that how you analyze the quantitative data and things like that mm-hmm. but they said your your presentation skills are top notch <laughs> and mm-hmm. i went home being very happy that i have made a mark what i wanted to do have i've done that so i didn't win but that's okay i learned mm-hmm. so much from there Yeah. and the fact that people came up to me and told me that there is something good there is a silver lining in all this uh, situation that happened so uh, i i became even more confident after that i i hardly fear presentations now and even if you tell me tomorrow that i have to make a presentation mm-hmm. i'll be like okay i'll do that yeah that is the thing you know you have to start somewhere you you don't have to worry about winning something but you have to have that experience go and 
follow that learning experience that is more important look for any opportunity to learn winning is not always important so another great uh, message from kirti yeah so uh, you know after 2 3 years i was in my phd and a girl wrote to me she sent out an email to me that you know you if you could recall you presented in kurukshetra university on a topic that i am working on and my supervisor has asked me to talk to you because he says that your presentation was fabulous so oh, wow you know, it made me so happy that that i made a mark no that's why people remember it even after 3 years that uh, that teacher remembered that there was a small girl who was scared and shy and who was uh, who described herself as a secondary researcher just because i was working on secondary data i think that made me really really happy i think uh, that makes me very confident with my presentations yeah that is the thing you need to be very courageous to take that first step to start out with something at least because that is how you learn and that is how your fear subsides with time with experience so just imagine if kirti had not attended that competition if she had just thought that oh my god all phd students are going to be there what am i going to do uh, i will definitely lose what is the point going if she had all these thoughts in her mind then obviously she wouldn't have been in this place today where she is currently now she wouldn't have had that experience that learning experience that exposure that she had in front of so many people that even today they are talking about that particular presentation that she had given so this is what the message is thanks again for this wonderful message keerti has there been an experience keerti where uh, your speaking skills have come to your rescue uh, yeah so you know what happened uh, during my mphil years I was mm-hmm. very over confident. I got a teaching job at Miranda House. Okay. So you can imagine that I I passed out from that college and I could go back sit with my teachers and colleagues and teach with them. So that was I think that was an achievement for me. I was extremely Obviously, happy. Obviously, yeah. <laughs> so um, I was quite over confident. I felt that my dissertation is going to be done very smoothly and uh, I I felt that I could manage teaching with my written I mean my research work as well. What I did was I chose a topic. I chose to work on farmers' rights. So what happened is I was navigating from one data set to the other because farmers' suicide is a political issue and getting the data for it is extremely difficult. So I went on from office to office asking them begging them for data about farmers' suicide. so there is under reporting uh, and uh, the records police records they are also fudged so rti is the only way that you get the correct and authentic data i kept on applying rti after rti after rti and uh, these people at the ncr they were not ready to share the data so they they are bound to reply within a month so what they did is they replied that the data is under process and we'll send it to you as soon as Uh, it's available so i kept on looking for data i kept on uh, writing to people i kept on visiting various offices and i was still not having proper data to work with But during mphil i was working on secondary data only. my written work also suffered because you know data is a raw material that we require in order to make yeah. out a good presentation you know uh, in order to write a good presentation my data was not available and what ever data was available it also had some issues so okay. there was so much office work there was so much chasing people for correct data and things uh, eventually we are supposed to submit our mphil in the second year mm-hmm. we do not get an extension either you resign or you submit so i submitted a very i think a very crude sort of work written work because see if you do not have the raw material it's not going to be a good work Mm-hmm. but during my mphil and master years i was always a good student i used to get a a minus nothing less than that i felt that this is going to bring my grades down and i was scared that what if i worked so hard all these years in masters also during the mphil course work and i'm just going to go down 
just because of the data work which was not my fault mm-hmm. so um, i submitted and my supervisor said that whatever you have at hand just make sure that you are giving your best so whatever yeah. was available with me i put it together in the dissertation in the written form and i submitted um eventually after 2 3 months we have a presentation so your marks are decided cumulatively on the basis of your written work as well as your presentation so i i oh, i analyzed the kind of work that i had submitted mm-hmm. i added some things which brought more clarity to it and i decided that this is the last opportunity this presentation is my last opportunity to boost up my grades maybe i didn't have time then to bring so much clarity in my work but i have worked really hard and that should reflect in my presentation today so i went on and i made a presentation on pharma suicide and i also told my limitations that my data uh, my data was a problem but whatever i presented i presented it confidently the questions that the uh, examiner asked me i was able to answer them properly so he got an idea that this girl has worked really hard but there were certain issues due to which she was not able to reflect it in her written part so he said that your presentation was flawless but you have done so many blunders in your written part and i said and i honestly told him that sir i think the topic that i chose that was that uh, i should have thought about it that i'm going to suffer these issues hmm. so he said that but you have covered all that up in your presentation and i'm extremely uh, i'm extremely satisfied and it's an excellent presentation so eventually i got an a grade which is the highest grade that we get for uh, people get a plus also but that's very rare and i think in my batch only one or two people uh, okay got okay. that so eventually i was a uh, topper during my mphil time also and my presentation came to my rescue and i was able to 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 uh, pull up my grades yeah. only wow <laughs> that's an incredible story actually so your skills have helped you in overcoming all the challenges that you were facing uh, in your written work this is how a presentation or your speaking skills can rescue you as well finally i would like to know kirti what would you advise uh, the upcoming researchers who want to get into the research field so what advice would you give them yeah so uh, so as i said research is all about your writing skills and your presentation skills you need to have that inquisitive mind you need to open up to question if you look to things around you you should have that why is this happening if you have that thirst to know the why you can be a good researcher and if you know that why you should also know how to get answers to that and you should be curious enough to get answers to that once you get the answers once so once you have a problem you have your research methods you you have uh, your respondents then you should be mentally prepared that you have to write it out and you have to communicate it via your written uh, via your journals via your article publications and also via your presentations okay and uh, would you like to share a few tips on presentation as well as communication final tips on because you have been a great presenter you have developed that skill over the years so please share some tips it will really benefit our viewers so a good presentation see your presentation is a reflection of how much hard work you have put in mm. so you cannot bluff you cannot bluff if you have worked hard that will reflect if you have not yeah. worked hard you cannot bluff and you cannot make fool out of your audience so the most important thing is to to do your homework really well your whatever you are presenting you should be confident about it if you are mm-hmm. adding a line in your presentation you should be extremely confident about it you should know the background and uh, you as a as a presenter you also have to think from the perspective of a listener that yes. if you were listening to that presentation what sort of question you would have in your mind and if you are able to answer that in your head you will definitely present really well yeah. also when presenting you have to take care of the fact that you have to think about the level of your audience 
so if i am a phd scholar today and i am supposed to give a presentation to first year college students my level of presentation will be entirely different from how mm-hmm. i will be presenting my academic work in academic circles so having that sort of common sense is important uh, as far as your delivering skills are concerned you can uh, just make presentations and try to practice them practicing is really important so do not wait that i have made a slide and i'll just go and present it try to time it out try to practice uh, in front of mirror or you can just take help from a friend or you can just you know just keep practicing that you know what are your strengths and what are your weaknesses and uh, your presentation should have everything that you are confident with if there is something you are not confident with just skip it in your presentation yeah absolutely even i uh, i completely agree with what you said that whatever thing you are adding to your presentation you should be very confident about it you should know what you are including in your presentation you should have an explanation for every every damn thing that you are including there because unless you do that if somebody catches you if somebody cross questions you on that particular thing and you have no answer why you have that particular thing on your slide then obviously you are doomed so know your stuff then you will be good to go okay so thank you so much kirti so this has been a wonderful conversation wonderful two segments of this particular podcast where you have shared so much of your experience so much of your knowledge and i'm sure this is going to be of great value to our viewers whoever watches this so thanks a lot for being on my show kirti thank you for having me and thank you for the patience actually <laughs> Hey yeah but it was important for uh, for all of us to know these stories that you have shared today because unless we knew the stories behind it it would have been a little more uh, difficult for us to grasp the concepts and understand it deeply so thanks a lot again and that brings us to the end of the second segment and this particular episode signing off from share it with ishani see you next time bye 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 everyone